Hey, welcome back, guys, for another episode of Catholic on Both Sides. I'm Robert, and this is my lovely wife, Arlena. Hello. Yeah, and uh, we just want to first thank you guys, first and foremost, for tuning in to our introductory video. For all the warm and, and beautiful comments that you guys left us, we really appreciate it. It was very heartfelt. And um, also, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe. And if you want to leave some comments about some future videos that you think we should uh, tackle, then please feel free to do so. But um, before we get into it, um, we'd like to start off with prayer. So if you all would like to join us in prayer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, let's get right into it. So, today's topic is about misconceptions, right? There's a dime a dozen of them out there. And one of the misconceptions that we want to talk about today is how do non-Catholic Black Americans what are the uh, some of the misconceptions that they have about Black Catholic Americans? Or the Catholic faith in general. Yes, and um, so, uh, as you know, right, we're Black Catholics, right? That's not a secret, right? No, no. Yeah, so um, I, I've been, like I said, a cradle Catholic all my life, and my wife. I converted when I was about 20 years old. Um, we've heard many different misconceptions with both of our walks of life. Yes, yes. Um, I, I've been a cradle Catholic, like I said, all my life. So um, I've heard quite a few of these uh, misconceptions, right? And so um, for starters, what's the first misconception that, that uh, everybody should hear? Well, one thing that I used to hear was there aren't any Black Catholics or that you can be Catholic. Well, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, she's right. Yeah, that, that's a, a misconception I heard too growing up, uh, especially from a lot of my friends. Like, how can you be black, Rob, and Catholic at the same time? Oh, man, it, I mean, did you hit your head or something? Yeah, so apparently there's only about 3 million black Catholics in America. And when you put that into perspective of the black community, as a whole and looking at the total of Americans period within America, it's a very small number of people. Yes, very tiny indeed. Um, you know, my, my great grandmother was Methodist and she converted, you know, to um, becoming Catholic. And so that's how I became Catholic because my mom uh, grew up in uh, Detroit as well. And she attended Catholic school as a young girl. So um, even in my family, you know, it, we were like uh, the only Catholics. I am the only Catholic in my family that I know of. Um, I believe I have some distant relatives that are Catholic, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, most Black Catholics live in the South. Um, most of them live in the East Coast. Robert and I are here in Texas. You know the Bible Belt, um, where there aren't many Catholics, you know, most people are Baptist or Methodist or some other faith tradition. The number is even smaller in the Black community. Yes, yes, indeed. And um, so uh, we're here to tell you that you can be Black and you most certainly can be Catholic. And, uh, you know, I don't think that that idea is as prevalent as it once was. But you will be surprised, you know, at, at how many people that um, you may meet that will still have this this uh, notion that you most certainly can't be black and Catholic. Uh, so what's the second misconception? Lee? Um, we're whitewashed. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Where's my white paint? At? Where's, where's my white paint? At, right. Yes. Yes. This one right here. I have gotten over my uh 40 something years, right? Uh, Rob, I know you Catholic, but man, you you are, I know you whitewash, <laughs> right? Yeah, or that, you know, just because we're Catholic doesn't mean that we don't have ordinary lives. Um, 
you know, we listen to all kinds of music. We have over the years become really sensitive to different kinds of music with, you know, obscenities and really um, profane, yes, and graphic language. But we still embrace our Black culture. Yes. We do have, you know, a predominantly white base of friends that we attend mass with. But that doesn't make us whitewashed. No. Um, you know, I think what they mean by whitewashed, right, is that, uh, like like Lena was saying, uh, somehow we would forget our culture, we forget our background. It was no way I was going to forget my culture and background. Like I said, I was born and raised in Detroit. Okay, so I'm from Pasadena, California. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, from sea to shining sea, there is, there was a lot of black people in Detroit. Okay, so um, no, you know, uh, I'm not whitewashed. Uh, I know my culture very well. I embrace my culture. I'm, I'm proud to be a black American. Uh, so, and we're raising our kids to appreciate their culture as well. Yes. And that leads us into our other misconception that we've heard is that, you know, you're, you're not black enough because what you're doing is not as acceptable as other faith traditions, whether it be Baptist or Muslim or even not having any faith tradition. And just leaning on spirituality. Yes, um, yeah, you you are not black enough, uh, or um, there's only one kind of way to express your blackness, right? And there's these other acceptable ways, but again, public enemy number one is being Catholic. You cannot express your blackness by being Catholic because somehow it's like oil and water is just it's just not going to mix right because for some reason and i can just look back at um my own past right uh i attended a catholic school that at one time was predominantly white but then it became predominantly black but then out of the those student out of, out of the student body excuse me there was only a few of us a handful of us that were catholic in the school and out of that, me and my good friend to this day were the only two black Catholic kids in that school. I grew up in public school my entire life. Um, I didn't realize it was an option to go to a Catholic school um, because that's all I knew. Um, and, you know, you hear things about the Catholic faith growing up where I grew up. and most of it is negative. What, what were some of the things that your family might say? Well, family, friends, um, they would say, why are you worshiping Mary? Why are you worshiping statues? That's when I was becoming Catholic. And, you know, I had to delve into this faith and learn as much as I could because I was curious. Um, hearing all those things, you know, can be quite disheartening. It can be scary. But once you really tap into the beauty of the church, you realize those things are not true. And it's it's not scary. It becomes something that is just the center of your life. Yes, um, I, I can second that. You know, I, I've heard that as well uh, growing up. You know, you guys worship statues. You guys worship Mary. Uh, why do you go to a priest to confess your sins? You're only supposed to confess your sins to God. And what is, you know, don't those priests molest, you know, kids and stuff like that? Um, you know, of course, we have some some bad priests, right? There, there's bad in, 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 in any institution. By the grace of God, I never experienced that. God has had placed some of the most generous and excellent priests in my life that helped form me in the man that I am today. But um, that's not to say, though, that somehow they see the Catholic Church as this kind of demonic entity, right, where you guys are practicing some weird EBGB magic and, and I see this incense and, and this, this weird chanting and, and all of this especially stuff, right? With, yeah. You know, Latin mass. Yeah, especially with Latin mass. Mm -hmm. It's always depicted in a way to show, you know, 
something scary or in a horror film. When we as Catholics know that's not true. But how do we get these misconceptions um, solved? How do we help the Catholic community as a whole, and especially our African American brothers and sisters that are curious about the faith or have, you know, some misconceptions that they've heard? And that's why we're doing this show. We just hope to be a light to to everyone that's curious. Yes. Um, like like Lena's saying, you know, what are some of the solutions to this? And and one of the solutions I can think of off the top of my head, right, is witnessing, right? Taking that light that God has given you, right? And this is for my, my black Catholic brothers and sisters out here that, that need some encouragement, right? Because it can be scary confronting some of your family members who aren't Catholic, right? Because we are still called to evangelize, right? We are called to evangelize. And some of the hardest people to evangelize are our own family. And so one of the things you can do is bring the truth to them, right? Be upfront with them. Go to church history. Pull out some of those books. Show them some of the blessings that we have that are Black, right? Like uh, Father Augustus Tolton, yeah. right? Show them that there are people that look like us. Okay. Yes, there are several black saints. Um, as you guys know, some of you know, um, if you're tuning in, thank you. If you're tuning in for your first time, um, but I homeschool the children and we absolutely love the Seton curriculum. But we have learned about black Catholic saints this year, and it's been so exciting to see the children light up and realize that they have someone that looks like them in their faith. That was a game changer for all of us. And it helps our approach to learning. It helps our approach to conversations about, you know, race and about what our race looks like in the Catholic faith. Our kids are getting older. We have three that are um, homeschooling right now and then we have a 16 month old. And so, you know, these, these questions are gonna come up and we think long and hard about how we're going to answer them how we're going to prepare them, but also how are they going to evangelize to their friends, to even family and people that they meet? Yes, um, it's, it's very important for us because we know that we are trying to raise saints, future saints, and that um, you know we, we lean on the Lord every day. Uh, we're not perfect. I'm, I'm here to tell you we're <laughs> not a perfect family by no stretch of the imagination, okay? We go to confession quite frequently. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes there are days we are just putting things together with just bubble gum and chicken wire. OK. And and somehow God makes it work. Uh, I'm a sinner. I'm sure my wife will tell you she's a sinner, too. We, yeah. we all are sinners, man. We fall, I fall so short, guys. OK. I don't have the, the, the magic answer to, to anything. But see, what we want to really let you guys know is that you if you feel this way, you're not alone. You're not alone. We here with you. We here going through this walk with you, whether we've met in person or just through the airwaves. We here. We got your back. Yes. And every day is a day to just taking God's grace. And so we just invite you, you know, if you have any misconceptions yourself, let us know in the comments. Yes. Yes. We would love to have a conversation with you guys. Right. Because, um, this this isn't like a black thing versus a, a white thing. This this is not what this this program is about. The reason why we're focusing on the black experience is because, as we as Lena mentioned earlier, right? There's only three million black American Catholics in the United States. That's a very small percentage, and so we don't have the representation that um, we need to have. We don't have the voices that we need to have to speak about our experience, right? Mm -hmm. We need to leave a larger footprint on the country. Right, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of our black Catholic brothers and sisters have left the faith. And we wanna, we wanna know why. We wanna know if they've had any bad experiences, if they had any misconceptions or any pressures to leave their faith because of their family or you no know, friends or things that are going on right now in the community. I know social justice is a big issue. Um, unfortunately as well, we 
as Black people have gone through um, some horrible things, unspeakable things. But all of those things aren't bigger than God. They aren't bigger than the church. And I think sometimes we lose the ability to see that when our hardships are so hard that we, you know, we stumble in our faith. I know we've all been there. Yes. Um, yes, we have. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's hard, right? It's hard being Catholic. It, it really is. This faith mm -hmm. challenges you every single day to push it to the max. Just at mass yesterday, Father was telling us that the Lord asks of us to go deep, to go deeper, to keep going deeper, right? And so as Catholics, that's what we have to do. We have to put on the armor of God and we have to go deeper, right? Because Satan wants us to play safe, right? To stay on the shore where everything is safe and have this false control over everything, right? And never address the difficult issues, right? This issue about race is a conversation in the Catholic church that we need to have. And we need to have more frequently. It doesn't have to lead to petty arguments and fights or anything like that, but we need to come to a mutual understanding with each other, right? Because when we start having these conversations, right, solutions can start being produced. Yes. And then the Lord will see that we are serious about our brotherhood and our sisterhood, and he will give us the grace to start solving these difficult problems. Yes. And I also believe that you know, sometimes people just want to be acknowledged. They just want to be heard. And that's encouraging for people that are maybe struggling with their faith or maybe trying to learn more about their faith. If they know someone is out there that is their advocate, that perhaps maybe looks like them, then maybe they would cling to Christ a little bit tighter and know that their battle is being fought a little bit harder. Yes. And um, one final misconception that I like to bring up uh, is one is that uh, you guys that are black Catholics, yeah, you, <laughs> you guys belong to the white man's religion. That's a religion of slaves. So aren't you just being slaves again with your white master in, in Rome, right? But see, again, you know, I used to get mad like fighting mad when, when people said stuff like that. But now, you know, obviously wisdom uh, has, has settled in on me a little bit more. And uh, I understand now that maybe this person has been hurt in some kind of way, right? Maybe they, they're, they're ignorant mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the church's teachings or what the church actually is. So um, I give them some grace with that. And I invite them to say, hey, you know, if you want to go grab a coffee, you want to have a, a little sit down, I can explain to you why I'm Catholic and what it means to me, and yes. why it's not the white man's religion. Yes, and two, you know, some of our Black Catholic saints were around many, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, when our church was, you know, going through hardships and reforming. And, you know, some of those Black saints were integral in our faith, and I, I don't think that's talked about enough. No. Um, we have some venerables and some blesseds that are on their way to canonization. Um, we need to stay prayerful with that. Mm -hmm. It's a long process, very um, expensive process as well. But um, we need representation. I think that's important. Um, I, When I became Catholic, I didn't realize how important it was. But as our kids began to get older, I started to see how important that was and ask questions. Are there any saints that look like me? You know, and that that's that stuck with me for a while. And so, um, you know, people just want to be acknowledged. And there's a lot of freedom in the Catholic faith that I don't think people see either. You know, there's always the negative parts and always the, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. But what about what we can do? There's so many things that we can do and that we don't have to be guilty. God has taken on that burden for us. We give everything to him, 
all of our hardships, all of our sorrows, all of it. Yes, and um, on that note, I think uh, we're going to bring this show to an end and close tonight. So again, thank you guys so much. I, I can't stress that enough. I'm a small little ant, okay? <laughs> and I am just ecstatic that just one person tuned in to us, let alone 600 plus of you that did. So thank you so much. God bless you. Keep the faith, right? Don't let the devil snatch your joy out of you, right? We are the church militant and we have the church triumphant and the church suffering having our backs. We have to take the fight to Satan and his demons every single day. We don't get a day off. Yeah, we can't be afraid to ruffle some feathers, you know, get people to think a little bit harder. That's right. Light a fire up yes. under them. That's what God wants us to do. That's right. <laughs> so until next time, my friends, stay cool, stay prayerful, stay consistent, stay persevering, but above all, stay Catholic on both sides. I'm Robert. I'm this, Lena. <laughs> and we love you guys. So check us back next time, okay? Thank you. And we're going to end and close with an Our Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 Father, and Son, say most of the black, pray for us. Bye-bye for now. Don't forget to share. <laughs>